Hello viewers! One thing you should check in your car on a regular basis is coolant level and if it's low, top it off. Otherwise, your engine might overheat, which can very easily cause expensive damage to its internal parts. But this brings us to the question of how much coolant is ok for a car to use and what to do if this is more than acceptable. Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out right now. First of all, what's an acceptable amount of coolant loss over a certain period of time? In an ideal world, the answer would be none, because the cooling system is fully enclosed, so nothing gets in or out. But if you have an older car with a lot of miles, it's ok to add 2 or 3 ounces every few months. Still, check the coolant level on a regular basis, I'd say once a month, and keep track on how much you need to add. Also, some of you might think the coolant evaporates over time, but this is not the case. Again, the cooling system is fully enclosed, like a bottle of soda, and nothing shouldn't get out of it even if it's left sitting for years. Now, if the coolant loss is substantial and needs to be topped off every so often, you should inspect the car and find where it escapes. Like with engine oil, the possible causes can be divided into two main groups. Either it's leaking out somewhere, or it's getting into the engine, where it gets burned during the combustion. And again, we'll start with leaks, which are easier to spot and, in most cases, cheaper to fix. One of the most common places where the coolant might leak is various rubber hoses that run between the engine, radiator and other cooling system components, which can crack. Similarly, we have these jubilee clamps, which, if not tightened up properly, won't hold the hose snugly, usually resulting in a slow and hard to spot leak. The next thing to check is the radiator, which sits in front of the engine, just behind the grill. This position makes it vulnerable to damage from road debris and rocks, which might pierce its metal core. In addition, the radiators usually have plastic sides that may crack under loads, especially on high mileage vehicles. Then we have the coolant tank with this cap on it, which has to hold the cooling system under certain pressure, usually around 15 psi. If the mechanism inside it breaks apart, the car might boil over, especially under hard loads, such as for instance when driving uphill. Also, as you may see, the tank itself is made from clear, transparent plastic, meaning it can crack and develop a leak. Apart from all this, there are several spots on the engine itself where coolant leaks might happen. This includes the water pump, thermostat housing and the oil cooler in those cars that have it integrated into the engine block. Lastly, what I must mention is one of the things often forgotten when looking for coolant leaks. The cabin heater, which sits somewhere behind the dashboard. Apart from getting clogged up, resulting in a lack of warm air coming to the vents, their core can also crack and develop a leak, with the escaping coolant dripping down the carpets, which absorbs them before you can spot it. So that would be all the places where the coolant might leak out. But now let's turn our attention to a worse option, that it gets burned off inside the engine. And what we have here as the most common culprit is the head gasket, which creates a tight seal between the engine block and the cylinder head. But if the car overheats, this gasket might crack, which usually results in either mixing of coolant with oil or coolant entering the combustion chamber, where it gets burned while the engine is running. Now we have a separate video on this topic alone, so if you want to know more, be sure to check it. It's much the same, but more expensive to fix if the cylinder head itself or the engine block has cracked, as this will again result in coolant leaking into the cylinders. But if you drive a car with a diesel engine, these things usually have something called an EGR cooler, whose job is to cool down the exhaust gases flowing back into the engine. Again, what we have here is a core inside, through which the coolant passes, and if this cracks, there will be a leak. So those would be the common spots where the car might be losing coolant, and what we want to know next is how to determine which of them is to blame. We'll start by checking for leaks, which, if substantial enough, will create a puddle underneath the car. You'll know it's coolant because it looks like water, but it has a greasy feel when you run it between the fingers. 
If that's the case, just chuck where it's dripping from until you have found the leak's origin. Now obviously this can sometimes be quite challenging as various components inside the engine bay might be blocking the view, so you might have to put some effort into the search. Also, what I point out here is one frustrating situation when there is a leak that only occurs while the car warms up to the operating temperature or cools down when you shut it off. And you probably won't spot this because the escaping coolant will evaporate before you have the chance to see it. The trick here, however, is to look for a characteristic pale greenish trace which is left behind after the coolant dries up. For that very reason, it's best to search for leaks while the engine is still hot and under pressure, because then it will be easier to notice if something is leaking somewhere. The cap on the coolant tank has a spring-loaded mechanism inside it to hold the pressure, and if this breaks apart for any reason, the cap will rattle when you shake it like this. Or you can also try to press the coolant hoses when the car is at the operating temperature. If they are soft, the cap is probably broken. Now, if the cabin heater is leaking, the windshield will keep fogging up when the blower motor is on and you'll probably notice the air coming through the vents has a sweet chemical smell. Also, the carpets in the driver's and passenger's footwell will probably be wet or damp, even when it hasn't been raining for days. As for the engine itself, whether it's a broken head gasket or a cracked cylinder head, this will likely cause engine running issues and white smoke from the exhaust. Also, the car might be overheating all the time and there might be a pressure buildup inside the cooling system which will cause different hoses to continuously snap off. The best way to check whether the head gasket is broken is by using the CO tester which will reveal the presence of exhaust gases inside the cooling system. How is this done? Step by step is shown in this video we made earlier. But if you're, even after doing all this, unable to determine why is your car losing coolant, it might be a good idea to have it checked by an experienced mechanic who has the knowledge and special equipment that allows them to accurately pinpoint the problem. Sure, you'll have to pay some diagnostic fee for this, but that's nothing compared to potential damage that may happen if the issue isn't fixed. While on the subject of money, you're probably wondering how much will it cost to repair whatever it's causing the leak. Well, a new coolant tank is usually around 10 bucks and you can easily replace it on your own. Hoses and gaskets are not much more expensive either, although access to them can sometimes be difficult, which is something you need to factor in if paying a mechanic to do the job. A new radiator will set you back at least $100 and I'd recommend flushing the whole coolant system as well. Replacing a cabin heater is, in most cars, a nasty and time-consuming job that might cost more than $500 as it involves dismantling the whole dashboard. And lastly, if a broken head gasket is the cause of the problem, it'll usually take a couple of thousand dollars to fix it. So, these are the most common causes why the car might be losing coolant and the ways to deal with it. I hope this video was helpful and if so, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your friends. On the other hand, if you're having some different engine issues, be sure to check other videos here or visit our site mechanicbase.com for detailed automotive repair guides. Bye!